man, it's it's hard to beat that welcome. Amen. I, it's I mean Amber just uh, thank you Amber for that. It just made my job a lot harder. No, uh, again, I just want to say welcome. Uh, and and again, if you're a guest, uh, we we thank you for choosing to be a part of our family today because you could choose to be anywhere doing anything on a Sunday morning. Okay, and typically, uh, if if we had it, if it was up to us, uh, we probably wouldn't choose to be here. Uh, and I can see that I think uh, some people are going to get here right when the service is probably ended. Right? They, they, t- they said, no, I'm not losing an hour. I'm going to keep my hour asleep. But, uh, you know, it, it is. We're, uh, we're excited today. And, and I can say this. Uh, I hope you came with the expectation. This is my prayer for you because I think a lot of times we come to church and, and we have some expectations that are unreal. And if you have unreal expectations, uh, you're going to have some unmet expectations. And even as guests, as, as, as members, as faithful attenders, uh, I, you know, it's, it's not about, man, I hope this person's preaching today. It's not about, man, I hope they, they're going to sing this song today. Or I hope, man, this person is praying, man, they're just a powerful prayer. I hope you came with the expectation to meet with God. Amen? Because here, here's what I know. If you came with the expectation to meet with God, then you'll get what God has for you. And God's got a word for you and I today. It doesn't matter. And here it is. This word is going to be tough. And it's needed so much. Uh, I, I probably wish I would have had this... Uh, I probably wish I'd have had this man some uh, 20 years ago when I got married. But you know what? It, it's, it's, it's here now, and God's going to do a great thing. And we're in this series called Living Hope. And it, it's this. You know, it, it's not wishful thinking. Because, you know, we can, we, we can have a, a, a world's view of hope, and it's wishful thinking. Well, I hope everything goes right. I hope I have a good day. I hope nothing goes wrong. We're not talking about that kind of hope. We're talking about the hope of glory that, that resides in believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Okay, that's the hope that this world needs. And, and we've been in this series uh, now for five weeks. This is part six. And, and this is just, uh, man, I, I love what we did last week. You know, we looked at last week. We, we talked about, uh, man, it's just, you know, you have some jobs that you like and, and you have some uh, – uh, jobs that you don't like, and and uh, for those of us that that are uh, work under people at work, man, we have some supervisors, crew leaders, whatever. Man, we have some of those that are great, and then you have some that just like, eh. and we talked about how to work for a jerk, because sometimes let's just let's just face it, sometimes you work for people that just feel like they got to have their thumb on you. They always and 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 they micromanage. I will say this. I have to confess and admit there was a time that I was a manager over a coffee house and I probably micromanaged. And lo and behold, I'm preaching a message about such bosses. But really what we learned was this, and I want you to get this. Don't miss this. If you wasn't here last week, this is great. it'll, It'll help you catch up. If you was here last week, it's a great reminder. The cause for the call of a Christian is the crucifixion of Christ. We talked about submitting to authority. Why do I have to do this? And it's it's simply the call of a Christian is a crucifixion of Christ. Well, they're they're not they're not nice to me. They don't treat me well, Pastor Mike. You don't know they have it out for me. They just, man, I think they're trying to get me fired. The call for Christian, when you look at it, is why why do you have to do what you do? The crucifixion of Christ. Why do you have to submit anyway? The crucifixion of Christ. Because guess what? Christ was submissive in the crucifixion. Because he had all power. He could have came down at any time from the cross, and he chose to go on through. He chose to be obedient. He chose to submit to a death that was the cruelest death on the face of the earth. And he did it for you and I. So when you're going through what you're going through, look at the call. Look at the crucifixion. And I, and I know this, and here's, here's what we, you may say, well, there, there's a way out. There's not a way out because of this right here. The circumstances you find yourself in does not change your call as a Christian. 
Ooh. That's tough. It doesn't change your call as a Christian. And you may say, I'm not a Christian. This is supposed to be you. See, we weren't meant to do life outside of Christ. We weren't meant your life and my life doesn't work outside of Christ. So the circumstances going on around you, I know there's tough times. Job or job loss. Working for people that are just hard to work for or you have a great boss. Or you, the relationships in your circle are great and, and, and some are, are, are not so great. It doesn't matter what you find yourself surrounded in, what's around you or what's going on. That does not change your call as a Christian. You don't get to just check out. You got to check in. You don't just get to check out. And today, here's, you know, this word we're going to have today, we're in living hope. And here's, here's the, if, if I could title this, here's what it is. It's, it's marriage roles. Roles in marriage. Okay? And I know what you're saying. You're saying, but Pastor Mike, I'm not married. That's okay. It's, it's a word for you. You might be saying, my marriage is on the rocks. Man, we, we're between a rock and a hard place. We can't get along. I don't like what he does, and I don't like what she does. This is a word for you. Or you might be saying, man, I'm battling. We're on the brink of divorce. There's a word for you. Or you might be one that is right now in the trenches of divorce. There's a word for you. And you might be one that says, man, that none of that applies to me. I'm single. I'm good, right? I'm good. Doesn't matter if you're single. Doesn't matter if you're married. Doesn't matter if your marriage is on the rocks. Doesn't matter if you're, you're, you're on the brink of a divorce. Doesn't matter if you're going through a divorce. Because what we have today is a great word that you and I need, okay? And you might say, well, I'm, I'm single. If you're single, then this gives you what you should shoot for. Today is going to give you what you should look for in that man or in that woman. And if they don't have these things, you need to X them out. Amen? Because when we do it God's way, it's beautiful. When we don't do it God's way, we complain about the mess and complain about the situation we're in. And we are why we're in that situation. God didn't do that. You did it because you didn't want to go by the plan. You did it because you didn't want to go by the plan. And so we looked at last week, we talked about this word. There was this word submission, right? And, and, and submission was, was huge last week. We talked about submitting to authority. And the scripture calls us to do that. And this week, submission is still going to be just as vital. It's still going to be just as important. Because we're going to talk about submission in the home. Uh-oh. 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 Uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, it is, you know, it, it's this right here. We, we, we're in first Peter, right? We're going to be in first Peter and we're still there. And, and we've seen believers that, that were, that were slaves. They were called to submit to their masters. They were, we've, we've seen believers that was, uh, that was called to submit to their authorities, and today, we're going to look at what that looks like in the home. And what people will tell you today, that what we're going to go over today, they'll try to say it's outdated. Right? That, that's what they'll say. They'll say it's outdated. They'll say that, uh-uh. I'm the boss of me. I ain't submitting to nobody. Right? Don't, don't we say that? But here, here's, here's what I got to give you before we get started. And we all need to heed this right here. The Bible is not an a la carte menu that allows us to choose just those commands that look good to us. Uh-oh. Come on. We amen that too. Right? Because church, when we think about it, that's what we like to do. We cherry pick. It fits us. So man, let me hang on to this and let me... Man, let me put this on Instagram. Let me tweet this. Let me put it on Facebook. Let me put it on Snapchat. I only have one of those. 
<laughs> I only have one of those because they say old people only have Facebook. Uh, <laughs> you know, but then think about it. We treat the Bible like that. It's almost like I got my grocery cart. Let me go in the store. Oh, I want to get this. Well, now, nah, man, that went up. Let me grab that 12-pack of ramen noodles. You no, know, we take stuff. We put it back. We go, man, it, 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 it looks good to us. We can't treat the Bible that way. And what we're going to do today, we're going to dissect Peter's instructions in the marriage and how those roles are supposed to play out. How those roles are supposed to play out. And we got to set this up. So you got to realize in, in, the, in the Roman Empire, women, they were low on the totem pole. They were. They were, they were low on the totem pole. And their, their self-esteem, they didn't really hold a, their, their self-value. They didn't really have a lot of self-worth. And, and some of these women, they were married, and, and then when they came to know Christ, they felt like that was the first real value they had in their life. They did. They would even, they would even have to rethink their relationship with their husband. And they would have to say, huh. And they think Christ is the all in all. But under him, there's still a responsibility that we have to fulfill in the role of a marriage. It's, it's not that, that, that we get to skip out on this stuff. They even thought that their, their, their new allegiance to Christ, their, 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 their believing in Christ and Christ being their Savior, they thought that it, it just eliminated them from an allegiance with their husband. I mean, that's how really low the, these women thought. They, they, they thought this. But here, here's the fact for you and I as we set this up and we get ready. It's this right here. The Christian citizenship in heaven does not cancel any responsibility of their citizenship on earth. David Jeremiah said that. And, and, and that is so true. We have, we know as believers and followers of Christ that this is temporary for us. But even in the temporary, you don't get to skip out on things God's called you to do. Right? We can't just go, man, whew, I'm here and then I'm going to be there. Because there's this thing in your life on your tombstone, there's going to be a beginning date, there's going to be an ending date, and in the middle is going to be a dash. And it's what you do with that dash that matters. It's what you do with that dash that matters. So here's, here's what we're going to look at first. Because, you know, again, if, you, if you've uh, done anything with me, been in any kind of ministry, especially student ministry, when I was a student pastor, we always let the women go first. So here's what we're going to do today. We're going to answer this question right here. What does a wife who displays the beauty of Christ look like? What does a wife who displays the beauty of Christ look like? It says this in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1. Wives likewise be submissive to your own husbands, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be one, by the conduct of their wives. Right off the bat, church, God's knowledge far surpasses ours. Amen. God's ways far surpasses ours. And here's, here's what. God knows that this is the best way to fulfill a marriage and to have fulfillment in marriage. Now, let me, let me give you men a warning, okay? Okay. This is not a heed. This is not a thing for you to rule with an iron fist. Okay? Because, see, Christ loved the church. Christ was a servant leader, which means as a husband, you're to be a servant leader. You don't get to rule as a dictator with an iron fist. Okay? That is not what this is. This is one of the most misunderstood pieces of Scripture. And this is one of those that, that us men like to have on the a la carte menu. And we, we, we sometimes wish that it was the only thing on the a la carte menu. Because here's what happens, and, 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 and I'm not preaching at you, I'm preaching with you because I've been guilty of this. When something happens and something goes wrong in that relationship, what's the first thing we say? You're supposed to be submissive. 
See, Christ led and loved the church. Men, are you leading in a godly manner? Amen. Are you leading in a godly manner? Here's the thing. It's, it, it, and it, here's what it is. It's more than, than action. Because see, what's really going on here underneath is a submission of the heart. That's what's really going on. This submission of the heart. And then it says there, wives likewise be submissive to your own husbands. Now, I, I know what you're going to think. It's talking about these wives. It's, it, it's, it's not talking about this wife. The wives here had more than one husband. It's not talking about that. What it's talking about is don't be submissive to all men in general. Okay? You be submissive to your own husband. Now, think about this. Why do wives need to do this? Why do they need to do this? Well, I can say this first and foremost, wives being submissive to their husbands has more to do with Christ than it does the husband. Amen? It has more to do with Christ than the husband because here's what it does. It shows your faith in God because he's the true head, right? It, it, first and foremost, it shows your faith in God. And then what it does is it has the ability to speak life to a man without even saying a word. That's what the scripture said. May be won by the conduct of their wives. They without a word. So it matters. It does. It matters how you go about your way. It matters what you do in that relationship. It matters how you talk to people. It matters how you look at people. It matters. Without a word, somebody can be one to Christ. So a wife who displays the beauty of Christ, she has determined in her heart to be a witness for Christ. That's beauty. Okay? That's beauty. She's determined in her heart to be a witness for Christ. And I know this, to be a witness for Christ, you got to live it out. Amen? That's rock-solid confidence in what Christ has called you to do. you got to live it out. And guess what else? Sometimes in living it out, you don't have to say a word. Sometimes in living it out, you're going to have to say some things. Because here's the thing. Some of these husbands in this time were not believers. And some of them wasn't in the church. 1 Peter chapter 3, 1 and 2. Wives, likewise, be submissive to your own husband, that even if some do not obey the word, they without a word may be won by the conduct of their wives. Then this, when they observe your chaste conduct accompanied by fear. Don't miss what's going on right here. That, that, that phrase there, do not obey, is important because it's talking about in reference to an unbelieving husband. Somebody that could have walked away from Christ. And if they walk away from Christ that easy, were they even a believer in Christ the first place? Amen? It, 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 that's what it's talking about. Do not obey. This is the idea that someone is in direct disobedience to what God has called them to do. Anybody in here ever been disobedient to God? Amen. Amen. You have. If you didn't raise your hand, you just lied. No, I know. I wasn't looking for you to raise your hand. But you know, there, there's this thing that when you look at it, a life characterized by submission to God and a fear of God, a reverence in the awe of God. And that's great. But that's what this wife is to do because it can win. See, here, here's when we do it this way, when the wife does it this way, it's a great benefit to the Lord. It's a great benefit to the marriage. It's a great benefit to the church. It's a great benefit to the community. It is when you do this. And I know this, a wife who displays the beauty of Christ, she lives to reflect the purity of Christ. That's her goal. 
She lives to reflect the purity of Christ. That sense of innocence. Not in a sense of having not done anything, but in a sense of who I am in God. Because when we come to him and we ask for forgiveness and, 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 and we confess our sins, guess what? It's a clean slate. People, we like to keep record. You know, we like to, man, I remember when you did this. Man, I'm glad God doesn't do that with us. Amen. I'm glad God doesn't do that with us. There's this sense of having some integrity. This sense of modesty. This sense of sexual purity. That's the type of woman this is. I also know this about a wife. She lives a life marked by continual reverence for Christ. It's not this fear of Him. It's this awe. This respect. This giving Christ honor. That's what this is. That's what type of life she's to live. First Peter chapter 3, verses 3 and 4 says this. Do not let your adornment be merely outward, arranging the hair, wearing gold, or putting on fine apparel. Rather, let it be the hidden person of the heart with the incorruptible beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which is very precious in the sight of God. Uh-oh. Women, don't y'all go start grabbing your earrings, taking them off, and, you know, don't, go, don't do that. You know, this, this, this right here is misunderstood a, a lot. Here's what he's saying. Peter's not advocating that women shouldn't dress themselves up and women shouldn't look good. He's not advocating that. He, he's not. So then, Pastor Mike, what is he doing? Hey, women, he's not saying that you got to get up every day and look like you just got out of bed. I'm glad none of y'all men amen that you wasn't supposed to, especially if your wife is sitting beside you. Okay? It's, it's not saying that. What it is saying is don't let the outside be the priority while you let the inside rot away. Okay? Do you, where is true beauty? It, it, it's from the inner. What he's saying here is, is it's okay. Let the outside be in moderation. Let the outside be in moderation. Don't let the, once you let the outside be the primary, man, it's, it's a whole shift. And now we're doing it to, to, to look good on the outside. What, what this is, this is a stern warning. Okay, because some, some of you men do this, too. It's about Jays. You know, I, I like Jordan, but I can't afford them like $300 pair of shoes. Them things, whoo. I liked them when they was out when I was at a, like 89 bucks. Get you a pair of Jordans. But here's what it's basically telling us, and this is a great, this is a stern warning against, against being preoccupied with the outside. Right? Because the outside, eventually, it's temporal. It's not saying a wife is to neglect herself, but the inside is to take the priority of a wife. It's to take the priority. She shouldn't major in being fashionable and just to keep up with the crowd the real question here is this why where do you find your source of beauty where do you find your source of beauty and I know this right I love what Warren Risby said about this he says any husband is proud of a wife who is attractive but that must come from the heart and demeanor not the store uh oh now, men, don't y'all go say, don't y'all go tell them when close the pocketbook, you ain't supposed to go to the store. I know it's what some of y'all thinking. But really, really, what it, it just goes to hints is you can make the outside look good. The, the grass can always be cut. It can always be green. The fence can always be washed off. But in the inside, if it's dirty and corrupt in a way, then what do you have? And really, it speaks a great word to women. Don't find your worth and value in what somebody tells you. Find your worth and value in the one who created you, and then it doesn't matter what anybody tells you. Amen? It doesn't matter then. 
And then you, I mean, when I go back here and I just look at verse 4, the start of verse 4, it says, rather let it be. It's hidden church. The, the beauty comes from within. Rather let it be. The hidden person of the heart. True beauty comes from within the heart. And I know what you're saying. You got to fight against that man. Well, I, I want something nice to look at. You got to get away from that. Because guess what looks do? Come on, let's be real. They fade away. Okay? And then that's why you fall in love with the heart. Because no matter what they look like, it's the heart that never changes. It's the heart. Guess what? The outside, guess what? It's going to give way to age. Amen. One of these days, well, I can't say I got great. My stuff is gray already. One day, you, you know, your, 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 your shiny hair going to give way to gray. Right? One day your skin is going to give way to wrinkles. That's just a fact of life. But what, what age can't do and what wrinkles can't do is affect this right here on the inside. That's where true beauty comes from. And I know this about a wife who displays the beauty of Christ. She shows her beauty from the inside out. And I think a lot of, you know, we, we've got a lot of reasons why things aren't working out. We've got a lot of reasons why the divorce rate is high. We've got a lot of reasons, but I think, too, it's, it's, it's from the perspective of we look at things from the outside in instead of inside out. When I fall in love with her heart, that's what matters. 1 Peter chapter 3 Verse 5 and 6 says this, For in this manner, in former times, the holy women who trusted in God also adorned themselves, being submissive to their own husbands. As Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters you are if you do good and are not afraid with any terror. Now, what, what Peter does here, Peter gives the women, a mountain of encouragement. And men, this ought to be a mountain of encouragement for us to see this. Peter gives us a mountain of encouragement. And he says it right there, in former times. This standard is not new. It's already been in place. It's nothing new. You don't have to try to figure it out. You don't have to try to figure that, that, the dynamics. It's there. This is not a new standard. That, that's a great encouragement. Here's the second encouragement. Is there's already been women who have gone before you and done this. Man, it, isn't that a great word? There's nothing like you going through something that somebody's already been through and they can speak life to you in that. There's nothing like that. On both sides. And here's the other, the other word of encouragement. It's possible for you to do it. You can do this. You can do this. And you might be saying, well, well Pastor Mike, I'm, I'm single. Let me tell you this. There's a gift in being single. Amen? Because nobody can compete with your time for God. There's a gift in being single. And if you're single... I mean, make sure get this stuff. They don't, they're not displaying this. Man, it, it, it's gonna be hard. It's gonna be hard to give them time. It's gonna be hard to give them effort. It's gonna be hard to give them a piece of you. And I know this about submission. David Guzik said this: true submission knows the place of both obedience and honor. That's true submission. That's true submission. And and and, and Peter goes on to use Sarah. As the example, he hammers this home. When he says, Sarah obeyed Abraham. And he did that. They are basically close to Egypt. And Abraham basically tells Sarah, well, if, if you tell them that you're married to me, they're going to kill me and let you live. I mean, that's a tough spot to be in. 
Guess what Sarah did? Sarah obeyed. And then, where, where does the honor come in at? She called him Lord. Sarah not only obeyed, but she showed Abraham honor. And then it says there, do good. If you do good and are not afraid of any terror. That phrase, do good, is just, are you willing to embrace the will of God? Are you willing to embrace the will of God? As a woman, are you willing to embrace that? And here's what I know about this, a wife who displays the beauty of Christ is this right here. She gets her inspiration from godly women of the past. Now, now women get this, okay? Godly women, okay? Those women who are, are, are Christian, not, 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 I didn't say perfect, okay? Don't, don't get me, I didn't say perfect. Those women who have a sense of discernment, those women who are doing life with Christ. If you're a married woman, don't go getting advice from a single woman. Amen? Are you men all the amen that if you don't amen nothing else? Right? It's just think about it, the dynamic. Okay? And on the other end, you married men. Don't go getting advice from a single man. He's single. He can't speak to what you're going through. He can't. She's getting advice from godly women. Women in this church. You need to find young women that are married and going through things and do life with them. Teach them. Everybody wants to look at that Proverbs 31 woman, right? Who's doing it? Who's getting elbow deep with it? Who's holding hands? Who's, who's a shoulder to cry on? Who's somebody to lean up against? Who's somebody to pray with? We're talking about living hope that will give this world only thing they need. And they can't find that hope anywhere else. And it does matter in your relationship of being a husband and a wife. It matters. 1 Peter 3 and 7 says this. Husbands likewise dwell with them with understanding, giving honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers may not be hindered. I bet the women like, whoo, glad he got off us. <laughs> right? I'm glad. I mean, man, there was six verses that was on us, and then he come here with one verse about the men. Right? I'm like, whoo. Husbands, that word likewise is huge. Just as the wives. Husbands, likewise. Ephesians 5 and 28 says this. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. He who loves his wife loves himself. You got to ask yourself the question. As a husband, do I love me? Amen. Am I okay with me? First and foremost, do I love God? Is my heart right with God? Because let me tell you this as a man, if you don't know the love of God and you haven't experienced the love of God, you doing your wife an injustice to what's afforded to her by the Scripture. There's no way on God's green earth that you're going to love your wife the way that you're supposed to love her if you don't have the love of God. There's no way that you're going to be able to love your kids the way that you're supposed to love them if you don't have the love of God. Husbands, let me give you this. Quit putting those hobbies ahead of your wife. Okay? She is to be a priority underneath God. He's the first priority, then your wife. Then the kids, what we like to do is we like to put kids in front of our spouse. Uh-oh, no amen there. But that's it, that's out of order. That's out of order. Your relationship with God is first, and then your relationship with your spouse, and then your kids. 
That's how this thing works. So husbands, there's some things here. Let's go back to 1 Peter 3 and 7. There's some things here that, that we need to take a look at. Husbands likewise dwell with them. That word dwell with them, that phrase is, is this. You are to live with your wife. Okay? You're to be with her. You're to live with her. This is a oneness that was set by God in the confines of marriage. Hard to be married and be apart. I remember Tony Evans said this. You know, when people say, hey, I don't, I don't have to come to church to be saved, you don't. But he said this about a marriage. Husband, stay away long enough and your relationship will change. Okay? If you stay away long enough, the relationship will change. There's this oneness. you got to dwell with them. And then there's this word there. It says, with understanding. Uh-oh. Man, Pastor Mike's going to tell us how to figure women out. I'm not going to tell you that. I get in trouble. <laughs> no, but, you know, this, this thing, understanding. Okay, with understanding. Well, what is this? you got to take the time to get to know your wife and know her well. And what that means is you don't listen to respond. You listen to know. Okay? You listen to know. With understanding, take the time to know your wife well. Well, where does this fit in if I'm not there, if I'm not married, if I'm saying marriage is on? You admit this is one thing. Take the time when you dating that person to get to know them well. Amen? Do that. He says here also, giving honor to the wife. This is huge. This is even huge. You know, uh, this is huge for us too. Your wife needs to feel honored in a way that no other relationship feels honored in your life. She needs to feel honored. She's not to feel like she's belittled. She's not to feel like she's under. You need to honor her. Be careful what you put over her. And then when you put other things over her, you're like, well, man, my wife ain't doing this and my wife ain't doing that. Where have you placed her? All right? Where have you placed her? She needs to feel honored. It's this right here. Honor to the wife as to the weaker vessel. Oh, I'm strong. No, it's not that. Genetically, makeup is that, that that women are usually just a from a physical standpoint they're weaker than men. This weaker vessel. She's physically weaker, therefore she needs your protection. As to the weaker vessel, protect your wife. Don't put your wife in vulnerable situations. You know, it, one of the biggest things I can tell you in marriage is communicating. Is communicate. When you choose to not communicate with your wife, you've put her in a vulnerable situation. And here's the thing: is you got to do this because your prayers can be hindered, right? You, your spiritual growth can be hindered. It says there, heirs together of the grace of life. Husbands, she's not just your wife. She's your sister in Christ. Heirs together. You looking for somebody? You trying to find somebody that's dateable? You, you might want to have one of them things in there. What is their relationship like with Christ? Do they even have a relationship with Christ? Heirs together, grace. She's your sister in Christ. I, I love my wife. And she's, she's at home healing up. She was trying to stop a 110-pound dog from jumping downstairs. He'd never been upstairs. We're moving, and she tumbled down the stairs with the dog. And her, and she's, her wrist is in a brace and all that, but she's a redhead. She's tough. She'll do some things today that the doctor probably told her don't do. 
<laughs> but, you know, it, it's just this. I, I love her. But I better protect her. Anything comes in that house has got to get me. I'd rather them get me before they get my wife. And here's the thing. In church, I'm trying to tell you this from our, we got a lot of men who have cowered down. You, you want to know why we have some broken marriages? You want to know why we have so many marriages on the rocks? Well, you want to you know why we have single moms raising kids? It's because somebody said it got hard and it's okay to quit. It's not okay to quit. Men, we have a calling from God. It says we're to be leaders. We're to be leaders. We have a calling from God. And it says during the last part of that verse that your prayers may not be hindered. Live this out. You know, one of the hardest things for me to do with my wife, and I'm a pastor, was to pray with my wife one-on-one. -on -one. The hardest thing probably I've ever had to do from a ministry standpoint was to pray with my wife one on one. Men, you're supposed to lead. Don't worry about the words to say. If you can't pray for that relationship, how are you going to pray for others? Amen? How are you going to pray for others? So what does a husband who displays the love of Christ look like. Now I know y'all wives, if you sitting with your husbands or your husband to be, this ain't them, you know, you'll be over like, mm, yeah, got this one. Nah, I need to do better on this one. I did kind of say something to a couple that's a, a, a little more than a month away from being married prior to service. But yes, this is this is a good thing right here. The first thing is this, a husband who displays the love of Christ considers his wife. Amen? Here's how he, you, you, husband, you got to want her. Okay? Because I can tell you this, if you don't want her, the world will try to want her. And the world will try to woo her. Somebody else will try to say hi to her. Somebody else will try to lend a hand. You need to consider your wife. You have to want her. You got to be all in with her and only her. Okay? You got to be all in with her. You got to know her needs. You got to know her fears. You got to know her concerns. She needs that from you. You're to protect her. The other one is this right here. Is present with his wife. Your wife has to be a priority. Underneath God. After your relationship with God, your wife is the priority. And if it's not there, let's get it there. We're talking about a husband who displays the love of Christ. This one here. Respects his wife. And I mean respect with everything you've got. You respect her how you talk to her. You respect her how the words you use with her. You respect her how you treat her. You respect her by the places you take her. She deserves this. Not this. That's what she deserves. You respect her. Her needs and her differences. It's this right here. A husband who displays the love of Christ protects his wife. I mean all out protection. Protects his wife. You do not leave her vulnerable in any area of her life. You got to protect her. And I know what you're saying. Pastor Mike, it's going to be pretty tough. And I, I can't be everywhere doing everything for everybody. Shouldn't be everywhere trying to do everything for everybody. She's the priority. Protect her. One of the ways that you can protect your wife is you get down and you pray with her. Scott, pray about those fears and those needs and those concerns and, and those wounds. 
What else? A husband who displays the love of Christ is spiritual with his life, with his wife. You're going to say, well, Pastor Mike, what does that involve? You need to pray with your wife. Okay? Men, we got to do this. We get This is hard. You got to get down and read the word with your wife. We read everything else. You get something new, you get down, man, huh, let's read that, put that together. Right? You want to know how to do marriage? You want to know how to do life as a husband and wife? Read it. You got to be spiritual. You got to get in the word. You got to pray together. And guess what? You need to come to church together. Amen. You might say, well, Pastor, my, my hus- I, I'm a man. I'm single. This is what you need to be striving to do. This is what you need to do. 